Pearl this holiday season. I can't. Um. Pearl this holiday season. Saturday, it was Dan Marino leading the Miami Dolphins past Joe Montana and the Chiefs here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Yesterday, Nebraska staked its claim to the national championship, beating the Hurricanes at the Orange Bowl. And later this month, the Super Bowl returns to Joe Robbie Stadium. Today, South Florida's football focus is on explosive South Carolina, led by quarterback Steve Tannehill and his multi-dimensional aerial attack. The Gamecocks take on quarterback Chad Johnston and the powerful West Virginia Mountaineers. It'll be a hard-hitting knock-em-out affair. South Carolina and West Virginia coming up next on CBS. sunny beaches of South Florida. Happy New Year to one and all. And welcome to the 1995 CarQuest Bowl. Today's matchup features the pass-happy Gamecocks of South Carolina against Don Nealon's sturdy Mountaineers of West Virginia. Just a short drive away from the beach outside Joe Robbie Stadium. A traditional parking lot scene. This time it features South Carolina fans. And inside, we're getting ready for some football. The Gamecocks of South Carolina come in with a 6-5 and five record. They're members of the SEC. It's so important they landed twice. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Joe Robbie Stadium in Fort Lauderdale and the 1995 Clark West Bowl. A matchup this year between the Big East and the SEC. We've got South Carolina coming in with a 6-5 and five mark. They struggled at the end of the year, but they won an important game at the end of the season to finish 6-5. and five. They defeated Clemson in that one. West Virginia started off horribly, but they won six of their last seven, including two important home games against Boston College and Syracuse, and they come in with a load of momentum. Well, it might be a little difficult to keep my partner's mind on what is going on here today because back in the 70s he was an all-american quarterback at the university of oregon he played for the chargers for a while and today of course for the first time since 1958 the fighting ducks are in the rose bowl but i'm glad you're here this ought to be a dandy and dan south carolina under first year head coach brad scott back in the bowl game first of all happy new year vernon happy new year to everybody else it's good to be with you again yeah i kind of like this game although my heart may be in pasadena because this is going to be a passing game for south carolina brad scott new head coach brought in uh, from florida state last year he has his team in a bowl game which is important uh, because they've never won a bowl game but he has got a pass happy offense as you said led by quarterback Steve Tannehill Tannehill has turned his game around 180 degrees he knows that in order to beat West Virginia today he may have to throw the ball 50 times that's fine with him and here come the Mountaineers of West Virginia Just a year ago that the Mountaineers of West Virginia went down to New Orleans with an 11-0 record. They had aspirations of a national championship. They got thumped by Florida in that game. This year, a different picture. They started out horribly after losing to Nebraska, Dan, but they have really come on at the end of the season. I think Coach Don Nealon's team has uh, really proven that they are a very powerful, hard-nosed, typical West Virginia ball club. 
and they are led by an outstanding group of running backs. You got Robert Walker. Jim Freeman is playing with a broken jaw today. He'll have a huge face mask. They've been replaced in the starting backfield by Jimmy Gary and Cantroy Barber, who's not only a big league running back, he can block with the best of them. On defense for the Mountaineers, they're going to have to stop this offense, and it's going to be the pass rush led by Barry Hawkins. He has four quarterback sacks from up inside, but in order for them to beat South Carolina today, they may have to run the ball over 50 times, and maybe they're going to have to sack Danahill 50 times. West Virginia, South Carolina, meeting here at Joe Robbie Stadium in Fort Lauderdale, the 1995 CarQuest Bowl. CBS Sports coverage of the CarQuest Bowl is sponsored by CarQuest for all your auto parts. Chamber of Commerce weather in Fort Lauderdale, 82 degrees, just a slight chance of rain, the humidity 53%. And we have been joined throughout the afternoon on the sidelines by Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, Vern. Well, South Carolina hasn't won a bowl game in 102 years of football. In fact, they're 0-8 in bowl games. And earlier in the week, head coach Brad Scott told us he can't imagine what these fans will do if they actually break that jinx today. I don't think there's any way to capture the moment that would happen in Columbia, South Carolina, if we're fortunate enough to win this ball game. Uh, we, we have had wins this year on the road where we get in at 2.30 in the morning. And there's over 1,000 fans there at 2.30 in the morning. If we win this ball game in the first ever in 102 years, I think that they uh, it might not be safe to go out for about a week. Now, on the flip side of things, Scott is 10-0-1 in bowl games as an assistant with Florida State. And if you don't think he's superstitious, think again. He's got his team at the same hotel, using the same practice facilities, even eating the same food prepared by the same caterers as he used when he was with the Seminoles. So a lot, the streak, could be riding on the breakfast table. Vern? Okay, Michelle, South Carolina won the toss. He'd like to do defer. West Virginia thus will receive to open the game. That's Rashawn Vanderpool, number 26. He and Mike Logan are deep for the Mountaineers. Reed Morton kicks it off for South Carolina. Very short kick, and it bounces out of bounds, so now the option resting with West Virginia. Well, they'll have their choice of taking the ball where it went out of bounds, which is about the 24-yard line. Now uh, they can kick it over from five yards back. Looks like they're going to take it. Or they can take it 30 yards from where it went out. Illegal procedure. Kick out of bounds. Receiving team's ball on the 35-yard line. First down. And they take option number three, which is to take it 35 yards, the 30 yards rather, from where it was kicked off. Referee is Robin Wood. You hear from him right quick. Here's Don Nealon in his 15th year as the head coach. And the quarterback, Chad Johnston, sophomore majoring in pharmacy first and ten that's the tight end for nail in motion the handoff goes to Jimmy Gary and he struggles for a yard fumble who got it the Carolina kids indicate they think they have it now the officials confirm it early huge break for the Gamecocks and it's their top tackler Hank Campbell the middle linebacker number 45 keep your eye on him as they run the tight end in motion and come back to the weak side but it's Campbell that gets his hands on the ball and with help from Aubrey Brooks Brooks knocked the ball loose and it appears that Brooks is on top of it big turnover Steve Tannehill in the cockpit they will go from the shotgun South Carolina we uh, use the term pass happy you'll see how much they will throw it all over the lot first and ten at the 35 yard line Tannehill comes left first down caught by Derek Nicklow Daryl Nicklow number 11 gain of five let's check the offense Steve Tannehill the junior from Altoona Pennsylvania has been a three year starter the offensive line Wheeler Herring Vincent Dinkins, a very good center. Luther Dixon and James Dexter. Brandon Bennett, Stanley Pritchett in the backfield. The wide receivers are Cates and Nick Lowe and Foster the tight end. Cates is his favorite receiver. Second down and five. Put him clipped into the backfield to Bennett. He's got Wheeler in front, and that is close for the first down. At the 25-yard line. Tackle made by J.T. Thomas. And we'll check the defensive lineup now for the Mountaineers. Perkins, Hawkins, Browning, and Canute Curtis. 
The linebackers, Tafoni Thomas and Puppy Wright. And the defensive backfield, Aaron Beasley, 10 interceptions, leads the NCAA this year. Kid Washington and Charles Emanuel. Third and one. Danny Hill up under center, high formation. They give it to the fullback, and Pritchett has the first down inside the 25 at the 23. There's Sharp Yardage specialist is Stanley Pritchett, and he bounces outside very nicely off the tackle there of Puppy Wright, and Van Washington has to come up to make the tackle, but uh, uh, Pritchett did a nice job of taking that short handoff and running it to the outside where there was no hole up inside. Mike Reddick has entered the lineup now, number 25. He goes out to the right side and catches the pass well behind the line of scrimmage. Works his way inside the 20 and is tackled near the 16-yard line. Stop made by Knut Curtis, number 42. Well, we're, you know, Vern, when you're going through those lineups, you can't uh, stumble when you're giving them to the folks because this is a no-huddle offense, and they're trying to uh, get their plays called and put a lot of pressure on the defense. Interesting that both teams feel that they can wear down their opponent by uh, uh, different means. Number one, the Car Carolina is going to try and go to the no-huddle. Uh, West Virginia is just going to be trying to be more physical. Second down and four, gain of six officially on the last play. Opening moments of the game, no score. Here's the reverse. This is Corey Bridges, number four, and Bridges tackled at the two. Well, Brad Scott, who worked under Bobby Bowden at Florida State for 11 years, said he had some gadget plays, and he tries to reverse early on. Uh, and any key to any gadget play, Vern, is always the block of the quarterback. Check out number 18, Steve Tannehill. Good exchange there in the backfield between Bennett and Bridges. There's the block almost on Knut Curtis. A good job of running by Bridges. Takes it down inside the five. But they really have West Virginia back on their heels with this hurry-up, no-huddle offense. Great time to call the reverse. First and goal at the two. No score in the game. Opening moments. Little play fake. Pass in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Boomer Foster the tight end. Only the second touchdown catch of the season for Foster. How about play action first and goal at the two? Well, you said pass happy, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, Vern. <laughs> Obviously. Reed Morton on to try the extra point. Got it. Tannehill was a perfect four for four. This is the first play action pass, but they have the Mountaineers totally befuddled with their offense right now. A tight end in the back of the end zone could be any more wide open than Boomer Foster. Six plays, 35 yards, 7 nothing, South Carolina. Boomer Foster, the senior from Jonesboro, Georgia, with the first touchdown of the ball game. And it comes quickly, a nice uh, effort by South Carolina's offense to turn that turnover into a touchdown. That's the key, Vern, is you, you reward your entire team by taking the ball right down and scoring after your defense on the very first play from scrimmage uh, turns the ball over to you. That's, uh, that's a wonderful feeling for all the Carolina folks. Reed Morton will kick off again. And the West Virginia group wondering how that all happened. It happened quickly. Jimmy Gary's fumble on the opening offensive play of the game. Here's Rashawn Vanderpool. He is joined by Mike Logan deep, and they wait for the Morton kick at the five-yard line. They moved up a little bit now. This one he line drives, and Vanderpool takes it at the three. Has a little bit of room on the near side, and it's a fine return out to the 31-yard line, maybe the 30 where they'll mark it.
Chad Johnson, the quarterback. Let's check the Mountaineer offensive line. Tom Robson, probably the best of the bunch. Chris Click, an interesting story at right tackle that will develop. He's the most colorful one of the bunch. In many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Gary, Controy Barber in the backfield. Vanderpool and Abraham, the wide receivers, and the tight end is Lovett Purnell. First and 10, West Virginia. And you see the stats for the season in 94. Chad Johnson, who started the season as the starting quarterback, was benched for three games, came on against Virginia Tech, and reclaimed the job. And his first pass is good out to the 38-yard line. The catch is made by Vanderpool, and the tackle made by Ron Neely. Defensive line, it's Evans and Sullivan, turnip seed, and Rump. The two standouts there are the defensive ends. Brooks Campbell and Ronnie Smith are the linebackers. And the defensive secondary, Corey Bell, Ron Neely, Ben Washington, a true freshman, and the leading tackler on the team is Tony Watkins. Second and two. Purnell gives it off to Gary, and Gary spins for the first down, and a flag comes down with him at the 41. Holding West Virginia. Two critical mistakes early in the game for the West Virginia offense. Of course, the fumble on the first possession, and now on second and short, a holding call. That will push uh, the Mountaineers back. Referee again is Robin Wood. Holding on the offense. Ten yards, repeat second down. Well, this is the left guard, Rob, uh, Tom Robsock, and, and he may have been called for the holding, but for one thing we know is he's going to be a call for tripping. Look at him just reach out with that right hand, and that's a good block. That couldn't have been the call. Second down and 12. Cornell again heads in motion to the left side. Play action. Johnston fires right side. That's a good pass. Catch made by Rashawn Vanderpool, number 26. That's really the key to this West Virginia offense is their ability to run the ball, but also fake the run and throw the pass. And when we see uh, Rashawn Vanderpool here down at the bottom of the screen on the out route after the fake, this is a real good job of pushing the defensive back deep. Ron Neely causes him to trip, and the Mountaineers pick up a first down. Sophomore Rashawn Vanderpool, they do get the first down, his second catch of the game, and he'll get a rest now. Tony Minfield, Minifield, and Gerald Logan come in at wide receiver, and they both go wide to the left side. Logan is number five. That's him in motion now, another freshman. The toss and the sweep to the right. Gary bang down hard at the 40-yard line. Ronnie Smith, number 50, makes the tackle. Well, of course, a proliferation of bowl games this afternoon. Wisconsin leading Duke in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Alabama and Ohio State scoreless in the Citrus. USC jumps all over Texas Tech early in the Cotton Bowl. And here at the CarQuest Bowl, it's second down and 10. West Virginia, they trail 7-0. Purnell lines up tight right this time. Johnston looks left all the way and sails the ball too high for Zach Abraham. It'll be third down. Abraham. Mentioned that, excuse me. Well, yeah. Abraham, such a great story, Vern. Uh, the walk-on who uh, earned his scholarship through his performance and just had a great uh, final year at Morgantown. We tried to uh, spend some time with him a couple of days ago. And it happened right before the meetings, and there was no question that Don Nealon was in charge. He came in and says, I'll chat with you. He's going to a meeting. <laughs> Third and ten. Out of the shotgun. Johnston, right side, caught the pass. Legal catch isn't enough for the first down. It's going to be very, very close. And there's Zach Abraham with the grab. Right dead on that 50-yard line. Let's check out at, uh, his nifty footwork. Watch his left foot. Ball is well thrown. Great call by the officials. And it looks from that shot that he's going to be coming up about a foot short of the first down. And, of course, in college ball, only one foot necessary inbounds for a legal catch. Now the stretch. 
And the question, of course, will you go for it on fourth down? Of course you do. It's a bowl game. Absolutely. Well, doesn't need to make that decision. It's the first down. Yeah, a foot short, Vern. I was looking at his right foot. It was his left foot that got down in bounds, and of course, uh, it's the yep. right foot, <laughs> the correct foot. <laughs> Don Nealon. All right, now see if it had been the right foot, he would have been a foot short. You got this, Vern? You got to pay attention. I'm now. listening. Okay. But see, it's that left foot. But you know, this this marker here is a good foot behind that other one. <laughs> Jimmy Gary. Oh, fumble, out of bounds, loose ball. Who got it? He was down, down by, by contact. contact. And yep. that's a good call. That yes. was a, a vicious lick there at the end of the run. But his knees were definitely down. This is a West Virginia team that lost only 10 fumbles in the regular season. Less than one per game. This is another good call by the officials. Watch his knees go down. And then from the right side of the screen. There he's down, lunging forward, and there's a big hit right on the ball. That appears to be Tony Watkins, and that's what he does best in, on the whole team is hit people. Second down and six. Gary comes in motion wide right. Johnston. At the 45, Chris Rump, number 58. That's his seventh sack of the season. You have to give a lot of credit to the secondary. It appeared that Johnston didn't have anybody to go to at first and was looking for an escape route in the pocket. Can't spend that much time in the pocket when you got defensive ends like Rump all the way out here coming after the quarterback. Just a real good speed rush as he gets by Chris Click with a good spin to the inside for the sack. Third down and 13, West Virginia. They trail 7-0 out of the shotgun again. And Johnston, not much help downfield, and he's going to have to scramble. Now, he's got some room. And Chad Johnston has the first down plus. great about doing a college game Vern, because you never have to see the quarterback go into that old slide thing but the other thing at the end of this run this is a great job but watch number uh, 28 Chris Abrams Johnson's way out of bounds and in the big leagues that might have got him a penalty well for the season Chad Johnston minus 26 yards rushing he picked up 22 on that play Gary in a swing pass doesn't gain much the 30 yard line Tackle is made by Eric Sullivan, number 62. Seven nothing ball game. Just a quick recap. Jimmy Gary fumbled for West Virginia, the first offensive play of the game. And six plays later, South Carolina in the end zone. Steve Tannehill to Boomer Foster, his tight end from two yards out. There's the score. And then West Virginia got the ensuing kickoff. They have now moved it to a second down and nine at the South Carolina 31. Gerald Logan, number five, is the motion man. He comes back to the right. They give to the fullback, dive play right side. Controy Barber, number 46. He is starting in place of Jim Freeman, number 29. Freeman was the starter and suffered a broken jaw in practice after the season had ended. And Freeman is eligible to play today, but he's got that big birdcage around his face. More like a, a cow catcher on the old steam uh, locomotives, Vern. But Kentroy Barber is, is very impressive uh, in watching him in game tapes. Uh, the way he clears out linebackers for the tailback, Jimmy Gary, is very impressive. Look at this. Third and six. It's called an empty formation. Five wide receivers, and they come up empty. It's so out of character for the Mountaineers to go to a uh, five wide receiver offense. And the problem with it is if you go to it, you better go to it uh, and hit your hot receivers or you're going to get blitzed like crazy. 
And the Gamecocks came after him that time and did not, he did not deliver the ball. So that may make uh, Nealon think twice about going back to it. He, he told us yesterday he was surprised that they were had it in their game plan. But if it's in the game plan, you're going to use it. Fourth and six, and apparently Don Nealon has decided to roll the dice. It is a bowl game. Now they're going to call timeout because the game clock had worked his tail down to one second. So uh, no indication that he wants to try the field goal. He's going to go for it on fourth and six. But first, Chad Johnson is going to come over and talk about it with Don Nealon. Time has been called. In five minutes, Eva. Seven. Five minutes, Eva. 7.24 remaining opening quarter. This will be the 12th play of the current drive for West Virginia. They are looking at a fourth down and six. They've covered 43 yards in this current drive. The big play, of course, almost half of that total. Chad Johnson on the run. It appears they're going to go with that empty formation again, Vern. They have four wide receivers in the game, plus their tight end, Lovett Purnell, who they consider to be a wide receiver because he's got good speed. He lines up almost from the slot to the left. He's on the line of scrimmage, but he is the third receiver from the end. There's a flag down, and there is Purnell, the intended receiver. The pass incomplete. Check the infraction, and it was thrown on the near side at the line of scrimmage. Gamecocks were coming on the blitz that time. Ah. And they came a little bit too early. This will not give West Virginia a first down, though. It'll make it fourth and one, and I'm sure change the offensive deployment to Don Nealon. Burnell is the inside receiver, 82. He stretches out. This ball is just a little bit overthrown, but there's good reason why. That uh, linebacker who was offsides came in and took a pretty good shot at the quarterback, Chad Johnson. Right in the chest. That Aubrey was Aubrey Brooks, Brooks yeah. exactly. Second big play for Aubrey. But he might have been offsides because he was trying to time his blitz to Johnston's cadence. Well, they'll pass on the field goal from Brian Bauman, and they will try for the first down on fourth and one. Barber hit, dropped immediately. Aubrey Brooks was one of them. And David Turnipseed the other. Really don't understand the call at all. Fourth down and just a yard to go. They decide to go with just one back in the backfield. No lead blocker. And just a big play by Carolina as they just out quick. Watch the linebackers come in here and make the play on Barber. He really has no chance here. They're just outnumbered. So it was Brooks up high and turnip seed down low. They collaborated for the tackle and uh, no uh, measurement or anything of that no that sort. Tanny Hill and the Carolina offense come back on the field. Second offensive possession for the Gamecocks. And that pass caught short by Toby Cates, number 12, the tackle made by J.T. Thomas. Now, not only did they have a, a different type of offense in there where you would expect them to come in with two tight ends, maybe three tight ends, a fullback and a tailback, and run the short yardage blast or something, but they had a chance to kick a field goal from there as well. Brian Bauman, one of two from 40 to 49 yards this year, so that was well within his range. Here's the flip into the right flat. And Mike Reddick makes the catch, number 25. That moves the ball out near the 30-yard line. Reddick really a pass-catching specialist out of the backfield, though he's been limited to 14 for the year. Very much a, a primary target when he is in the lineup. And he stays in there now. Steve Tannehill will go from the shotgun. On third and four, South Carolina leads West Virginia 7-0 in the first quarter of play. Across the middle, Daryl Nicklo, number 11. First down, Gamecocks.
Niccolo comes out. But this is an interesting formation. This is another version of that empty thing, Vern. You see there, there are no running backs in the backfield with Tannehill. So he's got to get rid of the ball quickly. And he does to Niccolo on the uh, little rub route inside. And he makes sure he gets the first down. Or he'd have to answer to Brad Scott. <laughs> Corey Bridges back in. Blitz coming. Tannehill gets rid of it. Oh, what a dandy pass. And then the tackle broken. A fumble. And who got it? Looks like West Virginia has come out of there. Man Washington and the man with the ball is James Puffy Wright. A senior who is from Miami. There's a hit by Harold Kidd. He gets away, but it's JT Thomas from the backside that knocks the ball loose. So both teams now have a turnover. And this was a, a big play by Tannehill. A great job of fighting for extra yards by means. But again, a big hit by JT Thomas. And Puppy Wright comes away with the ball. Monty Means with a catch. Goes for not. Brad Scott looks on. First down, and Robert Walker's in the backfield now. One time starter, they fake to him and fire it to Vanderpool. And Rashawn Vanderpool fumbles it right back. South Carolina has the ball. Corey Bell made the hit. Well, how about this? South Carolina had only fumbled five times this year. West Virginia, 10. Again, West Virginia a little bit out of character throwing the ball, but this is what they wanted to do, was get Vanderpool in the middle of the field against the safety. That's just a great hit right on the ball. Neely, number three, and it's first and 10, South Carolina. Still 7-0. Gamecocks know how to hit the ball with their helmet. That's twice they've knocked the ball out on tackles. This time the handoff goes to Brandon Bennett, number 33, and the ground game not the most significant part of what goes on offensively for South Carolina. Bennett's had a heck of a year, leading rusher and the leading receiver. Didn't really buy into this offense right away because he was the main guy as the tailback last year. But he's shown his versatility, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield as well. This time, Danny Hill has a blocker in front, and Nicklo makes the tackle for the catch, and then is hit immediately by Aaron Beasley, number 32. You got to be impressed with the start of Steve Tannehill. That's his ninth completion out of nine throws, throwing a touchdown with that. But you see, not a lot of yards. This is not a bombs away type of offense. It's a high percentage possession type of passing offense where they throw the ball to just about everybody. Now they've got a problem with their substitution. Brad Scott sees that and is trying to signal for a timeout. Darrell Harris is trying to hurry off the field. He does on third and one. High formation, bobble the snap, bobble it back. And guess what? J.T. Thomas, number 41. He's a local lad, played here in Fort Lauderdale. This is extraordinary. Carolina with five fumbles lost this year. Now, there's a flag down on the far side, and it appears to be against West Virginia. They were offsides. But even before that, Tannehill ignored the signal to call timeout. Then West Virginia tried to call timeout. The officials ignored them. The play was snapped, the fumble. It's all coming back. Yards, first down Hanley. for Carolina. J.T. Thomas appears a little winded here in the 80-degree heat of South Florida. This is Puppy Wright right here, and he was the guy trying to call timeout, but he, when he got reset into his position, he was in the neutral zone. J.T. Thomas is out. Bo Chatfield has taken his place, number 55. So first down and a new set of downs for South Carolina. Danny Hill will run. He doesn't do this very well at all by his own admission. <laughs> Bernie picked up eight yards there. By his own admission. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to defend him. I know you would. Because he has a 31-yard run this year. 
And it was against Clemson. And that's the longest run of the year from scrimmage for anybody on Carolina, including their running backs, Bennett and Pritchett, who both have 29 yarders. So there. <laughs> Look at Southern California over Texas Tech. Whoops. Wasn't ready for it. And uh, there's a flag, a late flag, that joins the first flag thrown. Offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. This game getting a little uh, ragged here. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> the ball popping around and everybody's off sides. You think they might have spent too much time over there by the beach? Got the Goodyear blimp overhead. And those pictures supplied by the Goodyear blimp stars and stripe. At the controls capture Captain Richard Daniels from Burbank, California. wonder how long it took him to fly the blimp out here from Burbank. A long time. <laughs> he probably thought he was in a covered wagon. He probably came commercial, huh? I think. First down and ten. Little sloppy here in the latter stages of the first quarter. Here's the gadget play, and Danny Hill is nailed. Puppy right. Canoot Curtis. That sound you hear is an offense backfiring. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to go with a gadget play in that situation there. I mean, they, they had things going for them pretty well, but uh, this play, watch the pass rush, first of all, by West Virginia. They're into uh, the backfield. Wright was on a blitz. There's Knut Curtis, and Wright finishes off the quarterback for a huge loss. Second down and 25. Seven nothing the score. Two and a half to go first quarter. Here's Tanny Hill in trouble. Heaves it. Oh, bobbles it. And then gets out to the 40-yard line. <laughs> this looks like bumper pool. <laughs> yeah, that was the old, the old fake heave. <laughs> I think the ball got knocked out of his hand as he was trying to heave it down the field, Bert. <laughs> huh. It might have been his own uh, man up front working hard for him. Watch. Luther Dixon there, number 54, comes over, and he might have just whiffed on that one, but heads up to go after it and pick up a couple yards. Third and 18. Seven nothing South Carolina. There's his first incomplete pass intended for Mike Reddick, number 25, out of the backfield. And it'll be fourth down, and we'll have our first punt of the ball game. Mike Logan back to return the punt. And Marty Simpson, one of two punters who possibly could be utilized by South Carolina. Derwin Jeffcoat the other, and neither has been terribly effective. On the other side of the ball, the number one punter in the country, Todd Sauerbrook. This is a fairly short run taken by Logan at the 28. Good downfield coverage from Benji. Young, number 49. 32-yard punt, eight on the return. West Virginia has the ball. They trail 7-0. 7-0 South Carolina. West Virginia got inside the 30, but they failed on a fourth and one, their last possession. Now here is Chad Johnston with his backs in the eye. Play action. And Johnston comes to the right side. Good pass. And that's caught for a first down at the South Carolina 45-yard line, Zach Abraham. Good job of West Virginia recognizing the type of defense that Carolina plays. They like to play four straight across the board, so the weakness on that defense is this out pattern. This is a couple of times today now that uh, Johnston's had success going to Abraham right out there. Quick back at the line of scrimmage, first down. Clock uh, at 1.25 left. Oh, boy. Controy Barber. And turnip seed messed that one up, number 91. Right now, you have two different types of teams, Vern. You have one that's very quick and very fast with great team speed, and that being Carolina. And then you have the big, powerful men in blue here, the Mountaineers. And right now, the speed and quickness is winning out. It'll be second down from the 49-yard line. Four wide receivers in. 
Second down and 13 officially. Actually, this is that empty formation with five men split out. And the pass in and out of the hands of Gerald Logan. Gerald Long, rather. Number five. And that brings up a third down. Defensive changes for South Carolina. They'll bring in a fifth or sixth defensive back. They'll try and run some fresh bodies out there. It is kind of hot and humid here in the middle of the day in South Florida. And uh, you look at the sidelines of West Virginia, they've got those fans blowing cool mist on them, but I don't see any fans over there on the South Carolina side. No. How did that happen? Probably that word discipline. <laughs> Toughness. <laughs> You gotta be tough in 80 degree heat. Third and 13. Johnston caught. First down at the 30. Vanderpool. Rashawn Vanderpool, a 19 yard gain. First down, Mountaineers. And doesn't he have wonderful hands as a quarterback or an ex-quarterback, I should say. This is what I love to see in a receiver is the ability to, to catch the ball in his hands. What it does for a quarterback, it gives a quarterback more margin for error on the throw. This is a heck of a throw by Johnson. Again, he takes a shot right under the chin that shows his strength of arm and character. They'll test the middle this time on first down and 10, and they'll get only a couple. In between the 28 and 29, that's Robert Walker again. And West Virginia on the march now, trying to get the tying touchdown. That's the end of one with our score 7-0. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 CarQuest Bowl continues after this message and a word from your local station. You think you're in Cleveland with all that cool <laughs> air being blown around. Talk about a stretch for in Cleveland. Come on. <laughs> there's there's a poor man's uh, cool zone. Second down. And nine. Johnston back and under some pressure. Let's it go. Chris Rump was right behind him when he finally fired the football. It's incomplete. Intended for Gerald Long. Tannehill 9 of 10, Johnston 7 of 11 so far. And the surprising thing is that Johnston's thrown the ball more than Tannehill. Mm -hmm. But I, I had the answer to why West Virginia has the fans with the mist and Carolina just has a fan. The equipment man of West Virginia's got a pipeline to the head coach. That's it. Dan Nealon's his son. That's right. Look, it's going to be hot down there. 39. Good block. Johnston with time goes for Vanderpool who's bumped and it's going to be called pass interference at the one yard line. But they'll move the ball 15 from the line of scrimmage and give uh, the game the West Virginia Mountaineers wonderful field position. South Carolina's pleading that it should have been incidental contact. The call was defensive pass interference, but the ball was ruled uncatchable. Fourth down. Whoa. Yeah, good debate down there by Ben Washington. Got to give him a lot of credit. True freshman got in the uh, referee's face, said the ball was uncatchable, and that's a good call. There's a double coverage. There's the bump. But the ball was well overthrown. I always had trouble with that uh, call, though. I'd always like to give my receiver the benefit of the doubt, no matter how poorly I threw the, threw the ball. Yeah, might it not have been catchable had he not been bumped. That's right. You never know how far those guys can stretch out and catch the ball with one hand. Let's take a look at just how far this ball was overthrown, Vern. Looks like he's throwing the ball away to me. And, in fact, the ball... Comes down in the back corner of the end zone, 10 yards from the receiver. Appears to be a pretty good call. Uh, West Virginia has called a timeout now to discuss its options. They're looking at a fourth down and nine. Seven nothing our score. South Carolina leading West Virginia. Well, coming up next weekend, Dan, you want to read this promo? You bet, Vern. 
CBS Ion Sports sparkles with the style and grace of American Skating Internet Invitational. Superstar competitions headlined by Olympic gold medalist Oksana Bayul. See, I've been watching you, Vern. Yeah, that's pretty good. The action starts Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. All next weekend on CBS Sports. That Vern Lundquist had to be a professional announcer tape as I got for Christmas working out pretty good for me. I, I want you to worry about Mishku Chunok and Dimitri. <laughs> Not unless they win the gold medal. Head to head, this is the 12th meeting. Only one bowl meeting. That was in 1969 in a rainstorm in Atlanta in the Peach Bowl. They will not try the field goal. And, and now they're... Carolina calls timeout, recognizing they had the wrong defense on the field. Kind of ragged. South Carolina calls time, 14.47 to go, first half. South Carolina up 7-0, 1447 to go in the first half of play. And they apparently will go for the first down rather than the field goal. South Carolina with two timeouts remaining in West Virginia with one. And Don Nealon is going to pass on the field goal attempt. There's Brian Bauman, the freshman place kicker from Erie, Pennsylvania. His longest of the year is 41. So for the second time inside the 30, they opt not to let him try it. He has had two blocked this year. Johnston had a man for a moment in the end zone, and then it is knocked away. Intended for Robert Walker, Benji Young doing the defensive job. Talk about an outlet receiver choice for Johnston. He wanted to go down the middle to the left side, and then he sees Walker in the back of the end zone. And good defensive play there, but that ball should have been caught, went all the way through to the four and the three, and there's the obvious reaction by Walker. He has the linebacker beat there. Benji Young, number 49, good throw by Johnston, but just a long incompletion. Robert Walker misfired. And it's first down and 10. Tanny Hill will hand it off right side. And here's Brandon Bennett, number 33, out to the 32-yard line. South Carolina leads it 7-0 on a touchdown pass of two yards. Tannehill to his tight end, Boomer Foster. That followed a 36-yard drive after a fumble on the first play of the game by West Virginia's Jimmy Gary. Second and six. It's a very small crowd here, but a very vocal crowd. South Carolina, West Virginia partisans having made the trek to South Florida. Here's Bennett again. Works his way over right guard out near the 36. Puppy Wright makes the tackle. Talked about the uh, career of Brandon Bennett. He's in pretty good company here. George Rogers, of course, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Harold Green, the Cincinnati Bengal. But uh, Bennett uh, taking advantage of this new offense where he's a featured back. Showing his versatility, leading the team in rushing and receiving this year. Third and two, South Carolina now. 13.30 to go in the first quarter. The ball on the 37-yard line. Shotgun formation. Blitz coming by West Virginia. And they'll go deep for Tony Minifield. And Harold Kidd slipped. And Minifield makes the catch. Harold Kidd, number 22, couldn't get traction. Well, you, you know, Vern, there are slips, and then there are assisted slips. I think if we look at the end of this, we're going to see Mr. Robinson with an assist here at the end of the play. He kind of just pushes kid on by, not a big push. And a quick pass into the end zone. They went very quickly on that one for Toby Cates. 44-yard gain, look at it again. Watch his left hand as he just gives him a little shot in the back there. Good job of finding out where the ball is and going up and high and catching it. Second down and 10 at the 20. South Carolina already leading 7-0. Tannehill now 10 of 12 for 99 yards. Almost doubled the outfit on that last pass. Four-man rush. They stunt. Bass goes left incomplete in front. Of Brandon Bennett, number 33. Here are the stats on Tanny Hill. Of course, he made such a splash 
as a freshman quarterback out of Altoona, kind of a free spirit. I'm being kind in saying that. He's more than just a, a little bit of a free spirit. But when uh, Brad Scott came in this year, he said, look, we've got rules. We had him at Florida State. First thing you're going to do is cut your hair. And that was a, a, a big thing because that was a lot of hair to cut. Danny Hill back yeah. to Mayfield. Lateral. No, nope, incomplete pass. The official said no, it was backward. It was a lateral. So that'll bring up fourth down and long. Danny Hill, he said really he turned it around. Well, the rule is it has to be shoulder length. This is down to the top of the numbers, so it had to go. But uh, Tannehill realized that, hey, this is a great offense to play in. Charlie Ward won the Heisman Trophy running this offense. I want to be a pro quarterback someday. Uh, this is going to teach me how to read defenses. We're going to throw the ball every down. Coach, I'll do whatever you tell me. Just let me uh, have the ball in the backfield. Let me throw it down the field. And uh, you got to give him a lot of credit for... Uh, turning his lifestyle around and, and buying into Brad Scott's program. It's paid off for both he and Scott. I think we got a change of the call here. Uh, one official said it was an incomplete pass. Now they're moving the ball back to where it was recovered. So it apparently uh, was changed to be ruled a lateral. Recovered by Carolina. The back judge overruled the side judge and said lateral. Reed Morton from 47 yards away. The sophomore from Irmo, South Carolina. Could be. Got it! With plenty to spare. He is an interesting young man. When he was 16 years old, the year before his uh, senior year in high school, he was almost electrocuted in a boating accident. He was helping with the boat dock. And uh, his resuscitation became the topic of a 9-1-1 segment. You don't think pressure's ever going to phase Reed Morton. Nine in a row now. And 12 out of 14 on the year. As sure as the sun... Before his senior year in high school, he was helping his father and grandfather install a boat dock and uh, there was a loose cable electrical wire it uh, was grounded and he almost died it was a matter of fact uh, had no heartbeat for what a matter of five or six minutes and uh, he was uh, they had to charge him three times on the dock when they got him on onto the dock and then in the ambulance ride to the uh, hospital twice more so this young man has uh, overcome a great deal and was having a great year Indeed he is. Has yet to miss an extra point, and that was a 47-yarder, which, you know, hold the presses is a CarQuest Bowl record. <laughs> he might tell that to his grandkids. Mike Logan with the return. Got some room. Reed Morton made the tackle. 5'7", 170 pounds. Beautiful shots from overhead on a crystal clear South Florida January afternoon. And these overhead shots from the Goodyear blimp Stars and Stripes. The 192-foot blimp is based in Pompano Beach, Florida. Take a look at the uh, little tiny kicker getting his head in front of the ball carrier. That's the second tackle for Morton. Then you see the pile landed right on top of him. Good Wanna job because he was the last man. You know, that old one man to beat. Well, he didn't beat him. Want to start an all-fouts team? <laughs> no, thanks. Okay. All right, we got to get it, some... It would, it would only have quarterbacks on it, Bert. <laughs> oh, you give some sweatshirts, you know. That thing goes nowhere. Robert Walker is tackled. James Flowers. Just watch the quickness of the Carolina defense there. Good job up front. Linebackers filling the hole and Flowers making the tackle. Second down and 12. 10 nothing the ball score. 11.55 to go in the first half of play. Big run, Robert Walker. 
flag down. Tackle made by Tony Watkins. See what the infraction is. 38-yard gain on the run from scrimmage. Five yards, face mask on the defense. Five yards on the first down. This is Walker's longest run of the year, and he's going to get an extra five for the inadvertent face mask call, but he does a nice job of cutting inside Ron Neely there and then getting down the field. Biggest play of the day for the Mountaineers, and uh, that's a questionable call on Tony Watkins. He barely even brushed the face mask of Walker. First down and 10 following the 38-yard run. Vanderpool in motion. They give it to the fullback, and Cantroy Barber surges down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line Ron Neely and Ben Washington make the tackle and that's more like we talked about uh, at the top of the broadcast is that we have these four very tough physical runners and uh, Johnson comes out and throws the ball 13 times now they're getting back to Mountaineer football keeping it on the ground Second down and six. 11.06 to go in the half. Come to the weak side. Here's Walker again to the 20-yard line, about a yard short of the first down, and it's Ron Neely with a tackle number three. <laughs> Elsewhere, Wisconsin beats Duke 34-20. Alabama and Ohio State in the Citrus Bowl tied. We want to welcome those of you who've been watching the Cotton Bowl, <laughs> where the score is 31 to nothing, USC over Texas Tech. Good day so far for USC teams. Yes, that's right. And Mike McGee, the athletic director at Carolina, came from Southern California. Here's Walker. Well, he was looking for some blocking help, but his blocker got knocked backwards. Holding call. And they're going to get number five, Gerald Long, on the perimeter for holding. Trying to sustain his block against the cornerback. The Mountaineers really rely on their wide receivers to block for their running backs. And in Long's defense, uh, it took a long time for the play to develop. But they're going to get him anyway. Holding on the offense. Ten yards penalty from the spot of the foul and repeat third down. Darrell Long is number five. Watch the job he's doing here, trying to keep the defensive back away from the tackle. And again, a uh, questionable call. They're really calling him tight here. Yes. I mean, it didn't look like he... Uh, if he was holding, he didn't do a very good job of it. And as a result of that, it's going to be a third down and six. Fourth penalty on West Virginia. 10-0 is the score. South Carolina leads. Third time now that West Virginia's been inside the 30. And a big hole. This will be Walker for a touchdown. he was wide open. Very simple explanation for it, Vern. The Gamecocks were coming on an all-out blitz. They even brought the safety, uh, or rather the cornerback, Terry Cousin, from the left side of the screen. Here he comes. And once Walker gets through this first line, ain't nobody home. Lee Wiggins, the safety, stepped up inside, and Walker high steps on in. The extra point from Bauman is good. And the Mountaineers get on the board. Nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Many times the team will get beat by the forward pass on the blitz. This is just a simple running play with the lead blocked by Barber. Good cut back by Walker. And this is his very first rushing touchdown of the year. a certain level of excellence. The experience can't either figure out 
the experience. He can't either figure out where Walker is or turns down the play entirely. 24 yards, easy high step and touchdown for Walker. But you got to love this block by Love It Purnell as he crushes the linebacker. Here's the kickoff by Todd Sauerbrunn taken by Brandon Bennett near the five yard line. And he's got some room. And Sauerbrunn, the place kicker, or the putter rather, who also has the kickoffs, has to knock him out of bounds. Right now, let's go to Michelle Tafoya. All right, well, I'm standing by with Joe and Susie Tafoni, their daughter, Maria. This is the family of West Virginia linebacker Matt Tafoni. And, Joe, you played your college ball at West Virginia, went on to play for Cleveland and New York in the NFL. What's it like watching your son in his last college game? Uh, it's more exciting than playing. Uh, I can't tell you the feeling you get inside when you see your kid on the field. Yeah, it must be exciting. You uh, you spoke to Matt Wynn, and what did you and what kind of advice did you give him, if any? Uh, we spoke last night. Uh, he kind of threw us out of his room. He's getting ready for the game. He had his game face on, so you don't give him much advice then. I just tell him play hard, play tough, and a lot of luck. Well, a foot, footnote to this is that uh, a roommate of yours and a teammate on the New York Giants was Joe Morrison. Uh, you named Joe Morrison your son's godfather. What was your relationship like with the late Joe Morrison? Me and Joe were very close. Uh, we lock her next to each other uh, when we play for New York. And then when he left pro ball and went to coach the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, I played two more years, and then he asked me to come down and join him. And then uh, we had Matt when he was two years old, and they were just like uh, father and son. All right, and of course, the late Joe Morrison also coached the South Carolina Gamecocks. He was also, as we mentioned, the godfather of Matt. Let's go back to you, Vern. Okay, Michelle, Matt Tafoni, who is a pre-med student at West Virginia, and while we were listening to Joe Tafoni, a penalty call. That's kind of like a taffy pull. We had to foya to Tafoni. <laughs> and then a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, Miss Tafoya is demanding equal time. I had to change my name to Tafoutsi. <laughs> Nothing works with mine. <laughs> Tafern? <laughs> first down after the penalty. First and 15. 9 0 5. Danny Hill, little Utah pass, little shovel pass works. Stanley Pritchett, and out in Alameda, Lee Groskup just smiled. Lee Groskup was a quarterback at Utah and a friend of all of ours, who uh, popularized that more years than he wants to remember, back in the late 50s. It must be great to have a, a, a play like that that everybody will always say whenever they run it, and all you professional announcers do is that's the Lee Gross Cup play. Well, we've all worked with Lee, that's why, <laughs> and he tells us let's do that. That play goes nowhere. Brandon Bennett to the 33. And it was Matt Tafoni who came up with the uh, outside containment, forced Bennett up inside where his friends were waiting for him. Matt Tafoni said that uh, while he had the relationship with Joe Morrison when he was coach at South Carolina, he certainly thought that's where he would go to school until Joe's untimely death. South Carolina had talked about having him come as a strong safety. There's the pass over the middle, caught by Nick Lowe, and he's out with a first down to the 48-yard line. 7.51 remaining in the first half of play, the tackle made by Aaron Beasley. And the missed tackle by Van Washington, who had uh, Nick Lowe in man-to-man -man coverage and just flat uh, whiffed on the tackle. And that would have stopped him short of the first down. But uh, Van came in with his Darth Vader shade and, and missed the tackle. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. 7.41 to go, 10-7 ball game. South Carolina looking for its first bowl victory ever. That tackle made by Barry Hawkins, who's the leader of the defensive line for West Virginia. Number 99. Second sack on the day, and he's working against Vincent Diggin Dinkins as the nose tackle right here. Watch this battle here go on. Good job in the secondary, because Tannehill really had a lot of time to throw, but just uh, overpowered Dinkins for the sack. Second and 19 in the 10-7 ball game. Come on, no. Danny Hill, oh, good pass, wow. 
And a terrific catch by Calvin Owens, number 82. That gained a 16. Owens knew he was going to get belted. And he did by Eldridge Williams, number 19. We've seen a couple real strong arm quarterbacks. Big shot by Williams. Good hold. Good catch there. At the 45, third and three. Danny Hill comes right. Had a man open, couldn't see him. So he'll run for the first down. And more. <laughs> Uh, he's starting to like that running business. He had a lot of choices on this play, too. 26 yards. Once he broke the pocket, he could have thrown the ball to a number of guys, but he saw that the field just open up in front of him. And he says, I'm going to be the leading passer today and perhaps the leading rusher. <laughs> 26 yards on that one, huh, Vern? Nifty. And then at the end, you got a high step and tell them about it. <laughs> 26 yards for Steve Tannehill. This time the dive play to the fullback, and it doesn't get much. That's Pritchett on first down. And Tannehill's hurt. And he tripped on the handoff and fell on his right arm. Might have tried to break the fall with his hand and have a wrist or finger injury here. The backup quarterback is Blake Williamson, a junior from Anderson, South Carolina, who has seen limited action this year. He's thrown for 27, uh, thrown it 27 times. Take a look at it, Dan. Meanwhile, back live. Well, they did not put Williamson in the game, Vern. They had Corey Bridges in a semi-single-wing formation that time. Isn't that something? We're sitting here waiting for Williamson to come on. Take a look at this again. He gets up off the ground, and he's in real pain. Did not appear to be a uh, serious injury. He's back in the game now in shotgun formation. On third down and 12. Goes left. You know what? I think he was faking the injury. I think you're absolutely right. The play they ran the next time, if we can take a look at that formation and explain to you what they were trying to do, they had Bridges as a uh, quarterback in the game. And... Uh, this was a, a fake injury. Here is Bridges, number four, right there. Here's another guy. I can't even tell who that is. But there's no quarterback on the field right now. Take the snap from center, and they get nothing out of it. But uh... if that's something that Brad Scott brought from Florida State and Bobby Bowden, maybe he wants to send it back. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think Tannehill was faking the injury to set up the Bridges play. If so, eh -eh. no Oscar there. First day, my new boss throws me the key. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce. Coming up at halftime of the CarQuest Bowl, we'll update you on the latest sports news, including all the bowl action. And we have a special treat. Now, we know you've been training mentally and physically to take aim at the CBS Sports Ultimate College Football Quiz. And here's a warm-up question. Not for credit, though. What legend of the grand old game was immortalized as the galloping ghost? Was it Red Grange, Paul Horning, John David Crow, or Jim Thorpe? If you answered Red Grange, you are ready to tackle the rest of the test. It's all coming up at halftime. Now back upstairs to Vern and Dan. All right, Andrea. Doak Walker wants equal time. <laughs> and it's fourth down and seven. Danny Hill in the shotgun. Four and a half remaining before halftime. 10-7 to score. And why aren't they going for a field goal here? Let's have a rule about no field goals except 47 yards. Well, that's why I guess. First and ten. Terrell Harris, number nine, made the catch. And he got blasted, too. Great pass protection. Brad Scott's offensive line kept Tannehill without any pressure there. Only a three-man rush. This is excellent pass protection. You look over the entire field. There's the big hit there by Charles Emanuel. 
And Harris holds on. That's his first catch of the year. There's a shovel pass again. And the first and goal. It'll be second down and goal from the nine. Stanley Pritchett with the catch. Well, Tannehill has now thrown it 18 times. 15 of 18. Pretty decent afternoon. 16 of 19 now. 141 yards and a touchdown. And the irony there is that the touchdown was two yards long. Second and goal. 3.33 to go first half of play. But we have to dock him, though, for faking the injury, though. That was terrible. Boy. <laughs> Nicklo to the three. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a list of bad actors. We can put Steve on the, <laughs> on the list. Well, I can see it if, if the uh, next play was going to be wildly successful. But they just had a bunch of guys... Uh, crowded in there like a bunch of grapes. Well, do you think they were trying to fumble Ruski? No, they snapped the ball and they just ran a quarterback sneak. So we'll have to talk to Brad about that one after the ball game. Third and goal from the four. Here comes the blitz. Danny Hill. He'll run. Touchdown! Oh, watch him celebrate now. see his hair grow back great effort the extra point from Morton 236 to go the kick is up and good and Tanny Hill set it up with a 26 yard run and then he rumbled into the end zone Looks a little like Jim Everett, doesn't it? You right? You know, it's unfortunate that some of his yardage rushing is, is uh, attributed to him getting sacked because when he has run the ball down the field, he's done quite well. Only has 17 yards officially rushing. But this was a, just a heck of an all-out effort. Again, Vern, it's great to see these guys going all out as quarterbacks and not going for the slide. You can uh, smell that pay dirt, reaches out and gets in easily. He was in a little bit of a hurry to get the helmet off. And there's the touchdown again. You really got a feel for him because he, he really has done a great job of becoming an all-around quarterback. But you talked about him being a free spirit, Vern. Well, this is the time to be the free spirit. After you make a great play, go ahead. Enjoy yourself. Steve Tannehill. Looked a little bit like Archie Manning going for that one. Old number 18, huh? When he played college ball at Mississippi. Yes, indeed. Steve Tannehill, four-yard run. 66-yard play, and he also had that 26-yarder. To help set up the touchdown. He's done it with his arm and his legs. Marty Simpson will kick off now for South Carolina. Wearing number 19. Vanderpool. And Rashawn Vanderpool gets it out near the 19. They will give him credit for the 21. NCAA basketball coverage continues on CBS next Sunday with freshman sensation Felipe Lopez leading the resurgent Red Storm of St. John's. They go into Hartford to take on Donnie Marshall and the Yukon Huskies that Sunday at 2 o'clock on CBS. 
Now Chad Johnston and the West Virginia Mountaineers come out trailing again by 10. You almost feel the uh, obviously the score is in favor of Carolina, but also the fact that they're looking for their first ever bowl win. And these seniors, and it's going all the way through the entire team, are halfway towards it. Zach Abraham makes the catch at the 28-yard line. Well, three times we have seen West Virginia inside the South Carolina 30. And on two of the occasions on fourth and long, they passed in the field goal attempt and went for the first down. So they really need to move it quite some distance before they give Bauman the chance, apparently. Uh, apparently. And the other thing is they, they have gone against them is they only have one timeout remaining. Second down and five. Johnston in trouble. Dropped at the 20. Stacy Evans, number 93. And Eric Sullivan, 62. Left side of the screen is 62. Sullivan and Evans goes to the speed outside rush, beats Click. And there they are, both are, laying on top of the quarterback along with Turnip Seed. Too much quickness right now for the uh, Mountaineers to handle with the pass blocking. See South Carolina making defensive uh, adjustments and the empty formation, the five receivers now on third and 11. Rush coming from the outside. Johnston caught and dropped. Stacey Evans again, number 93. He has aspirations of becoming an FBI agent someday. And he's battling against big Chris Click at 6 8 300 pounds here's click here's Evans too much speed he talked about click just being a big old strong guy that just has real slow feet that's a great athletic move there missed the sack at first dove back in and got the quarterback South Carolina called timeout to conserve the 64 seconds that remain in the first half of play and we're going to get a chance now to see the number one putter in the country Todd Sauerbrunn of West Virginia with an average of 48.4 yards per punt and a long of 90 this year and with the way the momentum is is uh, totally on the side of the Gamecocks right now Sauerbrunn really needs to get off one of his huge kicks had a 90 yarder the first game of the year against Nebraska this is how he ranks with some of the great punters of all time in the NCAA. Interesting that the one name that's uh, number six on that list is maybe the best of the lot. Ray Guy. Well, the thing I liked about Ray Guy was the word net. His net average was what made him, in my mind, the greatest punter right up there with Yale Larry. Here's Sauerbrunn recruited as a place kicker. Came into the lineup the last game of his freshman year and punted three times for a 47-yard average. And the rest, as they say, is in the books. This is a good one. Taken by Toby Cates, number 12 for South Carolina. And he's bumped down. A flag is thrown at the 38-yard line. Sarbron, who is... Uh, become a friend of Sean Landetta. That's a 48 yarder and a return of three. Matter of fact, he said Landetta was going to be here today. At least he left a ticket for him. That may be like Glanville <laughs> leaving a ticket for Elvis. Now his 48 yarders right on his average and uh, with the penalty this will push Carolina back even further. But with the strength in Sauerbrunn's leg, you would think that at some point, Nealon would let him try a long field goal. Since he was recruited as a field During goal During the run kicker. back, a clip on the, on the receiving team, 15 yards from the end of the run, it'll be first down. Penalty apparently called on number seven, DeAndre James, at the end of the run. That's oh, DeAndre there. James hitting Sauerbrunn, and uh, Sauerbrunn showing some pretty good strength there. He's kind of a fire plug at six foot, 200 pounds. After the penalty, South Carolina first down, 51 seconds to go in the half. Run it up the middle. Canute Curtis with the tackle. 
Mike Reddick with the carry. We'll see now if they're going to be content to just let time expire and take this 10 point lead into the dressing room at halftime. I think that'd be a good idea. They don't have they have no timeouts, no way to stop the clock, and they're certainly taking their time. South Carolina scored on their first drive. They recovered a West Virginia fumble on the opening offensive play of the game. Oh, brother, near fumble. Stanley Pritchett bobbled the handoff. Then they got the touchdown, sandwiched around a Reed Morton field goal from Tannehill. And as a result, Brad Scott and the South Carolina Gamecocks lead West Virginia 17-7. That's the end of the first half with the score 17-7. Andrea Joyce along with halftime after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the CarQuest Bowl is sponsored by Buick and your local Buick dealers. The new Gillette Center Excel with microfins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. And by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And it's history. And its history and its lore. Well, we'll be the judges of that here. Just a few miles from that spot as we get set for the second half. Just a few moments ago, Michelle Tafoya had a chance to chat with South Carolina coach Brad Scott. Coach, uh, Vern and Dan were talking about the fake injury to Steve Tannehill when you pulled him from the game. What was the play you were trying to run? Well, unfortunately, we worked on a play, a special play for that situation, and we had some of the wrong personnel in the game. Strange things happen in bowl games. Well, you are 10-0 and 1 in bowl games as an assistant at Florida State. What does your team have to do in the second half to bring South Carolina's first bowl win ever? Well, we're going to have to play better than we did the first half. Too many mistakes out there. Uh, we're going to have to score points. I don't think 17 will win it. I hope our defense can continue to play hard and not give up the big play. All right, thanks, Coach. Guess the best of luck in the second half. Chad Johnston warming up on the sideline. He's going to have to wait a little bit before he gets back on the field as Todd Sauerbrunn kicks off for West Virginia, and it's taken by Brandon Bennett. He's got some room. Good return out to the 36-yard line. Steve Tannehill and Tra Chad Johnston, the two quarterbacks, leading their respective clubs today. And we talked about this uh, 17 out of 20, which is awfully good for Tannehill, but he's also, uh, you look at his rush yard, he's only got 17 net yards, but he lost a lot on sacks, so he's having a good day. Johnston not doing too poorly, but has yet to get his uh, team rolling with any type of consistent ground attack. Tannehill and the South Carolina Gamecocks go on offense from the 36. And they will open with the backs in the eye. Two wide receivers near side of the field. That's Brandon Bennett, number 33. Tackle made by Mike Tifoni, number three. Tifoni wants to go to uh, med school, wants to be an orthopedic surgeon. Told us he likes the challenge of medicine. I'm not so sure I'd want a doctor who's telling me that as a patient, I'm a challenge to him, though. <laughs> Second down and nine. <laughs> Danny Hill looks deep, lobs it up, right side, caught out of bounds. That's uh, Stanley Pritchett, number 39. Richard had a, a deep route called that time against Tafoni. Ball was clearly out of bounds. And the reason why is Tannehill's going to take a big shot from Puppy right, right to the face. And also JT Thomas in there. So it looks like the Mountaineers are going to blitz Tannehill the second half. Third and nine, South Carolina. Rush four this time into the flat. Bennett has it. Tafoni has him. He's down at the 40. It'll be fourth down. That's a real good defensive start for the Mountaineers. They're going to get back into this game. 
This is exactly what they needed. To limit the Gamecocks to just three plays and then make them punt. Mike Logan goes back to return the punt of Marty Simpson. And here's Logan, Simpson's second effort of the afternoon. West Virginia holds, they get the ball back in a hurry. Line drive punt, returnable from the 20. All the way back to the South Carolina 45-yard line. A 40-yard punt, five on the return, a 35 on the return. You talk about dodging the bullet, though, Vern. At the end of this run, your number 89, Maynard Caldwell will come from the right side of the screen, punch the ball loose, and Logan heads up, follows the ball down the field, and makes the recovery. Chad Great jo field position, excuse me, Vern, for Chad Johnson and the Mountaineers. See if they can capitalize now. They've not had that much difficulty moving the ball today. Vanderpool goes wide to the left. Zach Abraham is wide right. Backs in the eye on first and ten. Play action. Johnson looks for Abraham. He's got a step. Diving catch at the two. Zach Abraham's not real fast or shifty, but he has the ability to get behind the secondary. Number three is Ron Neely. It's just a flat go route, and then the effort at the end of it, where he concentrates, watches the ball all the way into his hands, watch his head, watch the ball right into his hands, gives up his legs, does not go into the end zone, but sets up his team on the three-yard line. Big hit by Eric Sullivan on the quarterback. First and goal from the three, backs in the eye. They fake to Barber, bring the play back and start it over. Dead ball foul. Two biggest plays for the Mountaineer offense today have come off of blitzes by the Gamecocks. The touchdown run by Walker and then that long pass to Abraham. Dead ball foul, ball start on the offense. Five yards and repeat first down. Abraham and Vanderpool come back in the lineup now. You know, they marked that ball at the three-yard line. It looked like uh, when Abraham hit the ground, he was all the way down inside the two, closer to the one. But now this penalty moves it back to the eight-yard line. Again, an eye formation with two wide receivers to the left. They hand it off up the middle, and the gain is negligible. Almost nothing. One of the reasons, Vern, they're putting the two wide receivers into the same side of the field is the Mountaineers want to control the number one tackler for Carolina, and that's Tony Watkins. Watkins has to go over and guard the inside receiver, which happens to be Vanderpool. So a lot of uh, mismatches and matchups going on here by both teams. Double tight end set now. Chad Wable, number 87, lines up tight to the left. Abraham the lone wide receiver. Walker splits out wide right. And then the flip to Barber. And he is popped at the seven-yard line. Ron Neely, number three, perhaps taking out a little of the frustration from having been beaten on that long pass, hits Barber and drives him backwards. And he only gives up about 70 pounds to Barber. About 175 tackling 245. That's a big hit, full speed. Good job, Ron Neely. Third and goal, West Virginia at the six-yard line of South Carolina. Vanderpool and Abraham wide left, Walker split wide right. That's the tight end, Purnell in motion. Now sets right. Flags are down, catch is made in the end zone. And I believe this will be against South Carolina. Purnell with the catch. TD if it stands. It looked like South Carolina had crossed the neutral zone, but were they drawn that way? Nope. Now you're all, all over it, Vern. The motion seemed to confuse Carolina when Purnell reset. 
right side of the screen. This guy is in the neutral zone. That's Abrams. But this catch is right out of the highlight film, looking a lot like an old tight end of mine, Kellen Winslow laying out in the end zone. Great catch. Love it, Purnell. And by no small coincidence, if I can say it, Kellen Winslow is on the sideline this afternoon. Burnell had the key block on Walker's touchdown. Then watch the effort as he lays out. Great catch. Everybody limber. Love it, Burnell's terrific catch. That's him on the left. Has pulled West Virginia back to within three. And South Carolina getting ready to return the catch. Mike Logan's 35-yard punt return set up that short drive, and it was Johnston to Purnell for the touchdown. Now here's Sauerbrunn with a kick. Wow. Take that, Brad Deloiso. Right now, let's go to Michelle Tafoya, who's somewhere here in the press box. Michelle? That's right, Vern. I'm just a few booths away from you in the South Carolina radio broadcast room where Bob Fulton has been the play-by-play -play voice for the Gamecocks for 43 years. He's one game over 500 in that span. Today, he's broadcasting his last football game. Let's listen in for a couple plays. Today. Coming in at center will be Vincent Dinkins. He has shared center activity today with Paul Beckwith. Cox will line it up in the shotgun. First and ten at the 20 with Cates, Beans, Nick Lowe, and Owens, the four wideouts. Pass over the middle, and it's caught in there by Nick Lowe. He is up to the 30-yard line. Darrell Nick Lowe on a little delay pattern over the middle, and he's stopped in there by Charles Emanuel, who's the strong safety for the Mountaineers. A Almost a first down. Bob, that's a six-pass Nick Lowe's call today. We said earlier he's kind of the go-to guy of the day, and that's a little unusual. Norman's been Toby Cates, but Darrell has responded appropriately. Second and one from the 29. Shotgun again, a pass off the corner. Complete to Bennett. He's up to the 32. Hits down as he gets to the 33-yard line. That'll be enough for a first and ten. Matt Tafoni, the weak side linebacker, and the middle linebacker, J.T. Thomas, make the hit on the play. So the Gamecocks get a little breathing room out to the 34-yard line, and they'll go to the shotgun again with Cates, Means, Nick Lowe, and Owens, the four wideouts. Tommyo drops back all the way to the 25, and he's going to be hit, and then gets away, fires one up the middle, intended for Toby Cates, and he is covered up there, covered well by Charles And that is, again, Bob Fulton, 43 years. Today's his last football game. Vern? Okay, Michelle. Bob, you passed the audition. <laughs> I think that's terrific. First year, 1952, Eisenhower was in office. And I was one year old. <laughs> Tackle made at the 36. And just as a footnote, and not to ignore this, on the other side of the press box is Jack Fleming, who is the voice of the West Virginia Mountaineers, and Jack Fleming isn't retiring. That's why we're not giving him equal time. <laughs> He's in his 42nd year. He's just a puppy. Boy, in a, in, a, in a profession where longevity is not the norm, that's terrific. South Carolina, third down and long. They need to sustain a drive to keep equilibrium there. Lobs it down the near side. That'll be out of bounds, and West Virginia's going to get it back. Monty Means, the intended receiver. Certainly appears that uh, Don Nealon's pep talk at halftime uh, he hit all the right chords. This is a totally different ball game than we had just a half hour or so ago. Carolina just can't not cannot move the ball at all. And again, here's that West Virginia is going to get excellent field position. Marty Simpson is on to punt. Last one was returned 35 yards. It was a line drive. This one's much higher, but returnable. Logan at the 22. Good downfield coverage. But the Mountaineers scored the last time they had the ball, and they've got it back, trailing by three. 9.42 to go in the third. 
9.42 remaining third quarter. West Virginia with a chance to go on top if they can get this drive into the end zone. This game is being dedicated to their late baseball coach. Dale Ramsberg died in November after a short bout with cancer. He was 57 years old. He had been the baseball coach for better than 25 years at West Virginia. And it is to his memory that the football team has chosen to dedicate this bowl appearance. Yeah, the DR stands for Doug Ramsberg, the rammer as he was fondly called. Dale Ramsberg. Right. First and ten. Johnston play fake. Being chased by turnip seed. And the catch is made to Lovett Purnell, who's fired up and trying to get the crowd to take a ride along with him. At least half the crowd. That's another great catch. And another good job by Johnston avoiding the sack and, and getting the ball to his tight end. West Virginia. Second down and four. 17-14. South Carolina leads. Walker. Out to the 37. Close for the first down. Tackle is made by Ben Washington, number six. Shots from overhead provided by the Goodyear Blimp, based in nearby Pompano Beach. Stars and stripes. And at the controls, Captain Richard Daniels from Burbank, California. This ball game, Vern, is a lot like the uh, Mountaineer season. They got off to the rough start, but uh, Neyland said it was his senior leadership that really was responsible for them winning six of their last seven games. But those seniors want to win their very last game. First down and ten on the last play. Purnell heads to his left. Play fake. Johnson looks for Purnell. Has him wide open. Here's Lovett Purnell. Downfield block from Gerald Long. And the big tight end rumbles down to the 43 yard line. He was a Mountaineer second leading receiver on the year, and he's showcasing all his talents. We've seen him block, we've seen him lay out for catches. Now, his running ability after the catch. Good job by Long this time. Cutting back across the middle, then finding where the end zone is. Getting in that direction across midfield. That's a gain of 20 and a first down at the 43-yard line. Johnston, draw play. Walker skips over a tackle. A flag is down. This one may come back. We expected to see a lot more of Jimmy Gary today, but Walker was the starter earlier in the year, and he is certainly making a strong bid to be the starter next year. Well, and it was Gary's fumble on the opening offensive play of the game that set up South Carolina's touchdown. He also bobbled another that was negated. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and repeat first down. And it's amazing how coaches will change their mind about a player when they see the ball land on the ground. Nealon obviously is going with uh, Walker because of Gary's inability to hang on. Don Nealon in his 15th year. Of course, his son-in-law is Jeff Hostetler of the Raiders. Married to Don's daughter, Vicki. First down and 17. Johnston with a play fake again. Drills that ball. Caught by Abraham at the 37. Now, Neyland talked about uh, Johnston being a dandy. He likes his dandy, strong arm and his mind. 3.5 GPA, but uh, this is a 4.0 arm. Just a high, hard fastball right into the chest of Abram. And that uh, picks up a lot of yards, gets him in a very favorable second and short situation. And six of six in the second half for the junior from tiny Peterstown, West Virginia. It's a small town of 800 located on the Virginia border. Here's the handoff left to Walker with a stiff arm that misses, but he shakes the tackle and has another first down at the 25. Now, earlier in the game, it was a matter of Carolina being quicker 
and beating the Mountaineers to the punch right now it's just straight power this is a lot like last night's Orange Bowl game where in the second half Nebraska just overpowered Miami where in the first half it was the Miami speed seeing the exact same type of situation here just caught a quick glimpse of Wally Burnham the defensive coordinator for South Carolina Leroy White is in the backfield now number 34 for West Virginia 17 14 Carolina's lead looks shaky right now they take the reverse Johnston in the end zone for Vanderpool caught beyond the end line incomplete pass incomplete pass but a complete 100 percent sellout effort watch at the end of this as he gets behind the secondary there's Washington and he just barely drags that left foot across the back line that was closer than it appeared at first uh, glance Gotta love the effort, though. These receivers are putting out for Chad Johnston. Second and ten, Gerald Long goes left. Minifield is wide to the right side. The toss to Walker. And a flag comes. At the 17-yard line is where the flag was dropped. They could bring this one back. I'm wondering if they're going to call our friend Gerald Long for holding again on the perimeter. He's out there battling as this play is slow to develop. It's the option to the short side. But uh, Long is out there fighting against the cornerback. And he may get called for holding against Terry Cousin again. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. And repeat second down. Here's Long and Cousin on the outside, five on five. He's blocking, blocking. Ah, there he goes. Yep, he reached that uh, for that jersey and pulled it out just a little bit. And that gives West Virginia a second down and 14. Gerald Long comes to the near side. Zach Abraham hurries on. That was the one thing Nealon said about how they struggled earlier in the year. In making any type of long runs because last year and the year before their wide receivers did a great job of blocking uh, you can't fault long's effort he just has to use better judgment as to when that defensive back starts to pull away from them play clock had wound down so south carolina will rest as west virginia calls time can you hear it it's the 16th annual toy 615 remaining in the third the it's the 16th annual toy 615 remaining in the third. The edge in the third quarter has been to West Virginia. And right now they look at a second down at 14. They have driven 45 yards already in 327. They trail though by three. Chad Johnston with two wide receivers to the right side and his backs in the eye. Play action. Rush coming, goes left, incomplete. Vanderpool the intended receiver that rush was coming by the uh, Gamecocks number one sacker on the year Stacy Evans he's been knocking Johnston around all day a little bit late there but I think Johnston may have heard him coming third and 14 it was in the Virginia Tech game that Chad Johnston really earned his spurs and got this job back. Eric Boykin, a transfer from Michigan, had started the preceding three games. That's the game, despite a loss, that Don Neal said turned the season around for this West Virginia bunch. Here's Johnson, tipped, intercepted. Picked off by Ben Washington, number six. All the way back to the 50. And finally brought down at the 47-yard line. It was tipped by Hank Campbell, number 45, and returned 43 yards. Yeah, Johnson trying to force this one in there, trying to show off his strong arm. But uh, Campbell is all over this one. Here he is right here. Johnson goes back. He's going to try and fire the ball in to his receiver. Good job by Campbell checking out the receiver and then breaking on it 
That's trying to go to the tight end. Love it, Purnell. And now Ben Washington is off on a wonderful return, picking up the picket line down the sidelines and getting everything he can out of it. Another Floridian playing for South Carolina. His first interception of the season for the freshman. And here's the handoff left side. And Carolina gets it down to the 43-yard line. There's Ben Washington, the freshman from Tallahassee. Right. Just learning how to shave, obviously. <laughs> Not a bad time to get your first interception on national TV. Tough time at the mirror this morning. <laughs> Second down and four. 17-14. Danny Hill slips the ball to Stanley Pritchett. Oh, what a momentum switch that might provide for South Carolina because they were really back on their heels. They really needed that turnover. Come on, and yet again, it was West Virginia inside the 30 and unable to score. 5-10 remaining, quarter number three, 17-14 South Carolina, and they'll check the measurement here. And then you might want to think back to all those chances that West Virginia had of just taking the field goal. Here they are, just down by three points. They could be in a position to where either they're ahead or at least tied. But Nealon has no confidence in his uh, field goal kicker today, Brian Bauman. We are at Joe Robbie Stadium, the 1995 CarQuest Bowl featuring West Virginia out of the Big East and South Carolina from the SEC. It was 17-7 at the half. West Virginia fell behind when Tannehill hit Foster with the first score. Morton's 47-yard field goal made it 10-0. And here on first down and 10 is the handoff of the middle to Bennett. In the second quarter, West Virginia got a 24-yard run from Robert Walker. That shaved the margin to three. Hanny Hill scored from four yards out just before halftime to make it 17-7. Then in this quarter, Lovett Purnell with a wonderful six-yard touchdown catch cut the margin to 17-14. That's where we are. And a 43-yard interception return by Ben Washington has ignited this drive for South Carolina. Toss to Bennett. Breaks a tackle, breaks another. Looks for one more and comes left. How about that? Well, Jerry Rice did that once. And it didn't hamper his career. <laughs> no, I, what I think happened is he saw that he couldn't outrun Harold Kidd to the corner and was looking to shift into another gear and didn't have it. Lots of blocking here up front. And then all great running backs have a knack for cutting against the grain, but Kidd uses his speed to take the angle Maybe he was looking to make a celebration uh, dance and hold the ball up in the air, trying to switch it over to his left hand to prepare for a straight arm on Kidd, and he lost the handle. Yeah, he was going to do a Heisman on Kidd, <laughs> and uh, the ball went to Plunk. They dive play. Pritchett down to the one-yard line. Nevertheless, it was a terrific run for Bennett. And, and it's going to be second down. Now. And since the turnover, this pass-happy offense has been all on the ground. And look for Pritchett to get the ball here. He's the Gamecocks leading scorer on the year. He's got 10 touchdowns rushing. These plays are being called up in the press box by Ricky Bussell, the offensive coordinator. This is his last game at South Carolina. He joined Brad Scott from Virginia Tech. He's going back to Virginia Tech in a week. And he hopes to go back with a part of the first bowl victory ever for South Carolina. Pritchett down at the one. Matter of fact, we were talking with uh, Ricky Bustle a couple of days ago. He came from Virginia Tech to join Brad Scott's staff. He just closed on the sale of his home in Blacksburg three weeks ago. Don't now you, he's moving back up there. Don't you love real estate? Yeah, oh yeah. Buy high, sell low, that's what he should have done. Ricky is in there somewhere. There he is right there. There he is. Ricky Bussell, he and his wife and their son Brad, seven years of age, heading back to Blacksburg. You notice the Gamecocks go into a full regulation huddle here down on short yardage, goal line offense. Got all their big guys in there. Third and goal. Left side, Pritchett, touchdown.
regular season. He gets one today. And it increases a South Carolina lead over Don Nealon and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Reed Morton, who strained his back making a tackle in the first half, and you see him limping just a little bit. Some question as to whether Pritchett got in or not. Good job on the left side, caving things in, but that knee is down, the ball is over. I say he's in. He broke the plane before that right knee hit the turf. Or did he? Yeah, that's the uh, benefit of having the camera right on the goal line, right where these hands are. <laughs> this official is standing right in front of our cameraman. He saw it as a touchdown. That's all that matters. And it does increase South Carolina's lead to 24-14 with 2.40 remaining in quarter number three. Stanley Pritchett, 49 yards, eight plays. And all eight of those plays were on the ground. So the interception gave Carolina great momentum, but also changed their philosophy where we're going to have to meet force with force. They kept the ball on the ground. Of course, those turnovers have been the big difference. Mike Logan back to return the, the kickoff. And 14 points off the turnovers now for South Carolina. West Virginia has had a self-destruct button that they've kept active today. It'll be Simpson kicking off. And Logan and Vanderpool, the deep man. There's Logan. First bowl game in six years for South Carolina. This is their ninth bowl appearance overall. They have never won. Here comes Vanderpool. And he is out to the 30-yard line. West Virginia gets it back on offense. NCAA basketball coverage continues on CBS Sunday with freshman sensation Felipe Lopez leading the resurgent red storm of St. John's into Hartford. They'll take on Donnie Marshall and the Yukon Huskies that Sunday, 2 o'clock on CBS. And near the conclusion of today's game, Dan and I will select a CarQuest Auto Parts player of the game. Jad Johnston from Peterstown, Virginia, said he almost went to Virginia Tech. He has a stepbrother, Travis Jackson, who plays basketball at Virginia Tech. He is the first homegrown quarterback for West Virginia since the mid-70s. Enormous pride, but a lot of pressure on him. Here's Walker going right. And Walker is cut down at the 37-yard line. And the way this ball game's going, Vern, it's going to be harder to uh, select that player of the game right now. A lot of guys are playing awfully well. John, Johnson went to that basketball game between Virginia Tech and West Virginia and sat on the Virginia Tech side of the court so he could root for his stepbrother. And uh, he had to uh, take quite a bit of razzing from his buddies and classmates. But that's the way it goes, he says. Second down, play action. Oh, good catch by Purnell. Look at him move downfield. He has been a huge factor for West Virginia here in the second half. Ben Washington with the tackle. Really impressed with these receivers of both teams uh, just reaching out and catching the ball in their hands. And this guy's got some athletic ability. Does not want to go out of bounds. Wants to get as much as he can inside the 40. First down and 10 at the 36. Backs in the eye, Johnston. Subject to Walker, who has gone over 100 yards in the game. He's got had 102 before this carry. Game on for Jimmy Gary after those uh, two fumbles early in the game. Robert Walker with 104 now. A couple of tattoos on the right arm with Chris Click. Those aren't the only tattoos he has. That's the tip of the tattoo iceberg there. <laughs> Second and nine. 
That catch by Abraham is good. And he's out of bounds at the 24. Well, this is a segue. Or it's going to be a segue. Or it's not. Well, what it was is a complete pass. Uh, and again, it's that out route, uh, Vern, that we talked about. That's about four or five of those now for Zach Abraham. And it's because of the coverage of the Carolina Gamecocks. They want to play four across the middle to keep their safeties involved in run support. But what they're doing is they're getting murdered by Johnston and Abraham on the outside. Johnston, Walker, block from Vanderpool. Nifty run, first and goal, West Virginia at the seven. Talked about the fact that Walker's over 100 yards. He had a big game against Maryland earlier in the year where he got 123. He's making a bid to be player of the game as well. Just a lead play, good vision to the backside there. And uh, out of bounds, all the way inside the 10. And that uh, interception didn't phase the Mountaineers at all. They come right back on offense. And they're overpowering Carolina again. We're in the final 50 seconds of the third quarter. First and goal at the seven. 24-14, South Carolina leads. Play action. Look for Abraham. Settle for Purnell. Touchdown, West Virginia. the Mountaineers are doing. Walker's having a lot of success. They're going to fake the ball over here on the bootleg. Johnson comes out and watch the effort again by Purnell. Knows exactly where the goal line is. Question is, does he break the plane? Not so sure about that. But it, does, it doesn't really matter. We've got uh, this kind of evens the score. He is down there. The ball is nowhere near crossing the plane. But it goes as a touchdown. And I bet you the same official made that call as made the uh, call previously when Stanley Pritchett did not get in but was ruled in for the score. Really doesn't matter. We've got a heck of a game. Radio Caritotomy can fix that. Pardon me? It'll correct your vision. <laughs> And make glasses unnecessary. I know it was a reach. 24-21. Well, that's a disputed call on either end. Richardson and Bennett are back. Good kick. It'll come out to the 20. Love it, Purnell, two touchdowns. We may have to go to the uh, CarQuest people and see if they've got more than just one award to give out. Because Purnell's having a heck of a day along with Walker, and we haven't even talked about the guys on South Carolina side, and they're still ahead in this game. Seven plays, 70 yards, 156. And we've still got 44 seconds to go in this quarter. Steve, South Carolina. That catch is good. Daryl Nicklow, number 11. Final 26 seconds of the quarter. Yeah, one thing we haven't seen a lot out of Carolina in the second half is the shotgun formation with the four wide receivers. And Tannehill took the ball from center that time and appears that's where he's going to receive this snap. Second down and two. Probably the final play of the quarter. And they run the die play. Get some running room out to the 35 yard line. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score South Carolina 24 West Virginia 21. 
CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 Carquest Bowl. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. First day, my new boss throws me the keys. Get it fixed, kid. So I took it to charge. Back at Joe Robbie Stadium, start of the... Kid. So I took it to charge. Back at Joe Robbie Stadium, start of the fourth quarter. South Carolina hangs on to a 24-21 lead. Vern Lundquist, Dan Fouts, Michelle Tafoya, and Andrea Joyce with you here. Don Nealon and the West Virginia Mountaineers hoping for a defensive stand against Brad Scott and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Carolina has a first down and 10. Tannehill pumps and goes deep, and that one could be picked off by Beasley, but it's over his head, intended for Corey Bridges. Aaron Beasley with 10 regular season interceptions this year. Number one in the nation, and uh, you don't get beat on the old out and up when you're the leader in the nation. That was the old uh, pump fake to the outside, but uh, when you're number one, you've seen a lot of balls thrown at you, number one, and number two, you've been able to catch the ball. He's been beat deep a couple of times, but uh, was not fooled that one. On second down, another play fake. Look for the screen pass. Danny Hill, boy, he has to hurry. Got rid of it, Bennett. Tackled and dropped at the 38-yard line by J.T. Thomas. And I guarantee you there was a couple of South Carolinians that were downfield before that pass was complete, and the referees just uh, totally overlooked it. That was a slow, rather slow-developing screen pass, and those offensive linemen, they trickled downfield. They got away with it. Third and six. 24-21. Not a lot of yardage, but pretty high percentage for Steve Tannehill at 23 of 30. Third down, six. Has a man first down. South Carolina will move the sticks. It's Terrell Harris, number nine, who hadn't caught a pass before this game. That's his second of the day and a, another key one. Third down conversions, keep the drive alive. Thirteen fifty remaining. South Carolina trying to win for the first time ever in 102 years. Remember doing their 87 bowl appearance in the Gator Bowl against LSU. Here's Pritchett going left. Watch out. Still rumbling. First and goal, South Carolina at the seven-yard line. He ran through the entire Mountaineer defense and then stayed in bounds. This is just great effort. Watch all the people that touch him. One, two, two go by, three, four right there. And now he's down the sidelines. May have stepped out. Yeah, the officials will bring him all the way back to the 25-yard line. So they were all over this one. Watch his left foot. Step out of bounds right about there. So Charles Emanuel with the push. Officially a gain of 26 to the 25-yard line. Tannehill into the end zone deep. And it was overthrown. And a little extracurricular shove at the end of the play. JT Thomas defending. <laughs> JT's a middle linebacker. Yes. He's still, uh, as he's walking now towards the sidelines, said, I'm going to go and run 30 yards, 40 yards down the field. I'm going to shove somebody. Mentioned that Gator Bowl appearance in 87. The quarterback on that team was Todd Ellis. He is now a sideline reporter for the South Carolina radio network. And the star wide receiver on that South Carolina team, Sterling Sharp. And if he is watching today, Dan and I both want to wish him the best. What a great, great football player he is. Here's Tannehill, close to the line. Caught, touchdown! Over the line. They're going to bring it back. Kurt Frederick made the catch, but Tannehill had crossed the line of scrimmage. 
Ball was snapped on about the 26 yard line and the flag is laying right on the 25 designating that Steve Tannehill was over the line of scrimmage when he hit Frederick for the score. But this one was really really close. There's the 26 yard line right there. Now let's see where he is when he lets go of the ball. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Well, I don't know. That, it looked like he got rid of the ball before he got to the 25. Tough to tell from that angle. He knew he was close, and now he sees the flag. That's a, a five-yard penalty and loss of down and loss of six points. That'll bring up third and 15 with 13-13 remaining. Double pass. Pritchett. First and goal at the five. A gain of 25. This work works because of the blitz by the Mountaineers and Pritchett almost fumbled the ball but he certainly knows where the goal line is he headed straight for it huge play number one to come back from the penalty questionable call that that was and to pick up all that yardage and set up his team at about the five yard line Reggie Alexander takes his spot in the backfield Alexander wears number 30 first and goal at the five Frederick goes wide to the left a former quarterback wearing number 16 and Harris is wide right play fake Danny Hill that's going to be down by contact at the 17 JT Thomas I think JT was just too tired to get faked out by Tannehill he pump faked Matt Tafoni off the ground and got around him but watch JT he doesn't go for it number three is Tafoni and he's got the quarterback, but he goes for the old fake. And JT says, I'm just going to run right through you. That's close to being a fumble. Loss of 12, second and goal from the 17. And the clock's still running with, nope, now it's stopped, 12.15 to go. It is stopped because South Carolina has called timeout. So the Gamecocks leading 24-21. They lost 12 on the last play. They've called time. We'll be right back. Ultimate comfort. Business ultimate comfort. That's the edge. And by the new Greater Fort Lauderdale. You'll love what we've done with the place. We're in the final quarter of the 1995 CarQuest Bowl, 12-15 remaining at Joe Robbie Stadium. South Carolina leads it by three. They've got a second down goal at the 17. Had a touchdown negated because it was ruled that Steve Tannehill had crossed the line of scrimmage when he found Kirk Frederick for a score. Then Pritchett rumbled. Now there's a bit of a trick play. They try a fumble Ruski and nobody goes for it. Joe Troop is the ball carrier number 34 and puppy Wright is the guy that stayed home and made the tackle on the play this is the play they tried to run earlier when Tannehill faked the injury but look at here the ball was snapped between the legs by bridges to trope but there's puppy Wright with the tackle and again uh, they had the right personnel in the game that time but I got a feeling Vern that that noise you just heard was the playbook being torn in half and that play being part of the half that they throw away. <laughs> That's 0 for 2. 0 for 2 in the same game. Here's Danny Hill. He's in trouble. Barry Hawkins, number 99. And that may have pushed him out of field goal range. 
which is the most important thing. Trying to set up the screen off the sprint out to the weak side. Tannehill's going to come this way and then want to throw the ball back here, but watch all the Mountaineers come out and take this screen away from him. They just have done their homework. Two guys on the screen, and now Tannehill is faced with four Mountaineers. Brings up a real long field goal try. It'll be 47 yards, and it'll be Simpson because Reed Morton strained his back on hitting a 47-yarder earlier. It's blocked. The ball deflected and will come back to the 20-yard line. Significance now that Simpson had the kick because Reed Morton strained his back making a tackle on a kickoff back in the first half. Okay, and then let's go back to that questionable fumble ruski type of play. Uh, that went absolutely nowhere. The fake screen that uh, resulted in the big sack. But before that, the pass play for the touchdown to Kurt Frederick that was brought back. Because Tannehill was ruled to be over the line of scrimmage. A lot of things happening there. This ball is drilled too low. This never had a chance. It looked like it hit John Browning in the side of the head. Watch how low Simpsons hits this one. Good snap, good hold. And he knew that he didn't have a chance on that one at all. And as a result, West Virginia has the ball back first and 10 with 10 40 to go. Walker coming left. Gets a block from Barber. And moves it out to the 45 yard line. A gain of 16. This game has had just huge momentum swings because of turnovers. And you almost have to consider a blocked field goal a turnover because it results in about the same thing. First down at the 46. Burnell, who's got two touchdowns in this half in motion. And they slip it up the middle. Gain of maybe a half yard. All right now, let's go and check in with Michelle Tafoya. Well, guys, I am sitting with Cindy Harper, who is the fiance of Chris Click, who is majoring in art education, minoring in python maintenance. Talk about this python that needs to be fed a 10-pound rabbit every Sunday. Who fed it yesterday? Oh, my gosh. We could not find anybody that would feed it. I mean, we're going to wait till Chris gets back to feed it. And what about these tattoos? There's one on the arm. You said it was a demon of some sort? It's a demon ripping out of his skin. And then a grim reaper on his skull. Yep, on the side of his head. And how did you tell your parents you were going to get marry this guy? Well, what happened was Chris, um, Chris met my parents. And um, whenever they met him, my parents are, like, really conservative. And they were like, oh, my gosh. And they loved him, though. I mean, he was, you know, he's shy, he's real nice and real polite, and they loved him. They may love him more after today. Back to you, Vern. Okay, Michelle, how'd you like to go home to, to take on a hungry python? He may be meeting the real Grim Reaper. <laughs> Never want to go home to a hungry python. Art major. Better be on the first plane home. <laughs> he's a day late from that rabbit. Chris Click. Meanwhile, the tackle for loss by Chris Rump. And it's third down for West Virginia right now. Play action. Johnston in trouble. Shakes the tackle. Can't shake the next one. Aubrey Brooks, number 43. And Stacey Evans, number 93. I've never quite understood why an offense would run a play action pass on third and 15. Who are you going to fool? They know you got to throw the ball. This is just wasted time and effort. It also keeps the quarterback's eyes from looking down at the defense. And as you can tell, the Carolina Gamecocks were all over it. Sauerbrunn is on to punt. Got a 90-yarder, as we said, in game one. Oh, boy. That bounce into the end zone, comes back, and will be touched at the one, but it is definitely a touchback. Todd Sauerbrunn. My, that went way up there. There was a movie called Son of Flubber. I think this ball's got a little helium in it. Making it to the pro. PM Eastern. That's all tonight on CBS. Danny Hill hands it off. And Bennett moves it out to the 33-yard line. Charles Emmanuel, number two, makes the tackle. Final eight minutes and five seconds. 
Bennett seeing everybody else running wild. Pritchett for uh, his ball club and Walker for the, the Mountaineers. And this is his best run of the day. Picks up a first down. Gain of 13, first down at the 33. Clock at 7.49 and running now. Backs in the eye. Bennett again has Pritchett leading the way. And another nice run out to the 41-yard line. Interesting in talking to both coaches, they felt that they could wear the other team down because of uh, the conditioning uh, wouldn't be the same as a regular season. These players have had a month and a half off, but it appears that, that both defenses are wearing out. They're being run on by uh, the opposing offense. And right now, it's going to be the team with the ball last that's going to win this game. Second and two. 7.09 remaining. South Carolina 24. West Virginia 21. They slip it on the dive play left tackle. Well, we've talked a lot about the 102 year, year history of bowl games in which they've not won. It began with the 46 Gator Bowl. It really hasn't been 102 years. No, I didn't. It's more like 48 there. And, and uh, a lot of Gator Bowl losses in a lot of high scoring games. They've given up a lot of points in that time. The defense for Brad Scott today has done a great job of coming up with key turnovers. See his part of his support staff on the sidelines are his two sons Jeff and John during that last time out. John who's uh, 11 years old is a water boy and he was out not giving water to the Gamecocks. He was giving water to the officials now. That is good coaching. When your dad's the coach, you're looking for your first one. It's time to slip some to the officiating crew. There are the two boys, Jeff and John. Third and short. Oh, man. J.T. Thomas. And we haven't even talked about defensive players being the player of the game, but this guy has had a heck of an afternoon. This is why you play middle linebacker. This is the type of performance you got to have. Short yardage. Watch number 41. Shoot the gap and then send the ball carrier backwards. Brings out the punter. And how big might that play loom? Watch number 41 right side of the screen. He hits Pritchett right in the backfield, and Pritchett goes the other way. Simpson on to punt, and Logan will return. He's returned one this afternoon of 45 yards. And now we're going to see what the delay is here. Delay. That's what the delay was. <laughs> You'd almost expect Carolina to come up with some fake off of the uh, punt formation, but they've had such bad luck with their two previous trick plays. He's sure Simpson's going to kick this one away. So West Virginia is going to get the ball back with about five and a half minutes remaining in the game, and they trail by three, 24-21. That will be returned, perhaps. No, it's sliced out of bounds. Simpson shanked it left. West Virginia gets it back, trailing by three. 24-21, South Carolina leads it. I'm standing by with George Rogers, South Carolina alum and 1980 Heisman winner. What does this team do to need to keep the lead and hold on? Our defense need to keep playing, keep playing hard. West Virginia seemed like they found a groove, and our defense need to, need to shut them down a little bit. You were with the Redskins in 87 when they won the Super Bowl. What would it mean to this program to win a bowl? Oh, real, real big. Brad, Brad is his first year, and he does such a great job. It would be, it'd be a shame if we didn't win this game for him. Thanks a lot, George. Vern, let's go back to you. All right, Michelle, we've got uh, 524 remaining in the ball game. And West Virginia has a first down at its own 35-yard line. 24-21. Johnston with a play fake. Fires left side, and Abraham was all by himself and did not realize 
that Corey Bell had slipped down. The gain is 14. Well, 26 is Corey Bell. He's got single coverage on Abraham on the outside. And there he goes on the ground. Abraham could have picked up at least five more yards, maybe more. 24 21, 5 18 remaining. First and 10, West Virginia at their own 49. Option play. Fumble! Who got it? I think West Virginia got it back. I think Walker out muscled Chris Rump for the ball. Looks like Rump had first shot at it. And yeah, Walker has a little bit more motivation and desire knowing that he dropped it. He beat Chris Rump to it. Watch Rump 58. Ball's on the ground right there. And that's just real <laughs> strong desire and strength by Robert Walker to get it back. Three yard, four yard loss though. Second down and 15. Walker now with 132 yards in the game. And touchdown. Draw play. Barber slips a tackle and puts that 240 pounds going straight ahead. Gain of eight. Wisconsin won earlier today. Alabama and Ohio State have been having a heck of a tussle all afternoon. USC and Texas Tech. Whoa. In the Cotton Bowl. The other USC. Yes. And the Fighting Ducks play this afternoon against Penn State. That's right. Four minutes to go. Johnston looks right. Incomplete one hopper across the middle. It'll be fourth down. West Virginia has a decision to make now. Oh, big time decision too, Vern. If you go on pass decisions by Don Nealon, you're going to say they're going to go for it, especially with just under four minutes to go. But if they don't make it, this gives Carolina wonderful field position with a chance to run the clock out. Both teams have only two timeouts remaining. And the Mountaineers are going to go for it. Fourth and seven, under four minutes remaining. West Virginia down by three. They have the ball at the Carolina 46-yard line. Play action, fired it incomplete. Intended for Rashawn Vanderpool. And he thinks he was held up. He thinks he was held up by Tony Watkins. This pass was underway so quickly. Watkins may have got away with one. Right side of the screen. Watkins knocked Vanderpool off his route, but did not interfere with him, and Carolina takes over in great shape. A certain Tony Watkins right here. Let's see if Vanderpool has a complaint as he tries to get inside the defensive back here. And I think that's just good defensive coverage there. As Vanderpool went on his way and did not come to the inside, Johnston perhaps was a little bit too quick delivering that ball. Pass incomplete. There's Rashawn Vanderpool in South Carolina in quest of its first. Bowl victory ever. We'll try and hold on for the final 3.52. That's going to be real tough for them to hold on running the ball against this Mountaineer defense because they're going to be jamming the line of scrimmage with eight men up, maybe nine men up, as they did that time and held Bennett to uh, actually cause him to lose a couple yards. Second down. And 11. You see, the plays are now being called by Brad Scott on the sidelines, who said to us the other day that if there's 60 plays in the game, 20 of them I'll call, and all the crazy ones that we you'll see, I guarantee I call them, so we can blame them for those two trick plays that didn't work. Second and 11, Tanny Hill play fake. Nobody open. Good defensive coverage, and somehow he gets rid of the football. Puppy Wright was all over Tanny Hill. And it goes as an incomplete pass. 
Here's puppy number four right here, but it's good pressure again. Gamecocks are going to try and fake the run, but puppy is just relentless. And Tannehill does just an outstanding job of getting the ball to an eligible receiver in Stanley Pritchett. That is close to being thrown to just anybody. Toby Cates comes to the right side. He's been a non-factor today. He's the leading receiver and stayed Tannehill's favorite throughout the season. Shovel pass again. Pritchett breaks loose. Oh, what a huge play. First down, South Carolina. Pick up about 13 yards on this play, but it doesn't go where it's designed. Watch Pritchett cut it all the way back to the weak side. Mountaineers are guilty of over-pursuing there, but you can't blame them. That's what they have to do to get the ball back. Great play by Stanley Pritchett. First down and 10, South Carolina. We're at the 240 mark. Now they'll try and keep it on the ground. And Bennett picks up about three inside the 40 to the 39 timeout West Virginia. That's a smart call. They got to stop start stopping that clock. They only have one after this though two and a half minutes to go. Clock is stopped with two minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the game. South Carolina by three. First day my new ball. Robbie Stadium today's overhead shots. Are there. Second down. There's the Goodyear blimp providing our overhead shots today. And at the controls, Captain Richard Daniels from Burbank, California. And a player is down for West Virginia. That stops the clock with 221 remaining. I believe it's uh, Canute Curtis, the rush linebacker for the Mountaineers. It is Curtis. Tannehill talks it over with Brad Scott. See if we can check out this injury. Here is Curtis, number 42. This might be a lot of times when the, the, they all get in the pile. There's a lot of heavy weight in there, a lot of bodies flying around. It looked like he uh, got his ankle twisted. He reached right now for his right ankle. Uh, but Bob be a third and three. Canute. Curtis comes to the near side. I think both of these teams have a real bright future next year. Uh, they have played extremely well today. They have a lot of young guys on both squads. They're in the bowl picture. Carolina back in the bowl picture for the first time in a long time. Looks like they're going to get that monkey off their back at 0 for 8. You had to figure that the percentages were in their favor. They've gone out and earned this one, though. They're 221 away. West Virginia can stop it one more time. Third and four. Draw play. Reaches for it. Did he get enough? Because if he got the first down, that should just about wrap it up. Yeah, the referees moved the ball back a couple of inches. So he'd probably come up just short. Check a look and see just how close this one is. Puppy Heck right. of an effort at the end of it, though, to reach out for it. Yep. The referees took some of this back from him. Like after he hit the ground, they rushed up and moved the ball back. A weak side run that cuts all the way back over the strong side. Now fourth down. Two ten and the clock running. 
fourth and inches, and they'll take as much off the clock as they possibly can. Might even let it wind down. There's 10 seconds, nine, and then call timeout. I think that's what he's got in mind. Real, good, real good clock management, Vern. Use as much time as possible. It doesn't matter if you call a timeout. Important thing is to know exactly what play you're going to run. Let those big hosses up front get a little water. Get ready to go. Steve Tannehill and Brad Scott. Carolina is 151 away from the win. Mike Klein's been my State Farm agent for nine years, and he's been a coach. With 151. Nine years, and he's been a coach. With 151 remaining, and that should do it. First down, South Carolina. West Virginia, by the way, cannot stop the clock during the injury. They were charged with a timeout, so they are out of timeouts. And they're out of luck. Pritchett's had a heck of a game, short yardage. Remember, he scored on this exact same play to the left side. Just overpowered the right side of the Mountaineer defensive line. 1.32 to go, 24-21. Right side, Stanley Pritchett fumbles the ball into the end zone, still loose. Who wants it? Out of bounds, touchback. And a guy that saved the touchdown is, or the touchback, Wilmer Foster knocked the ball away from West Virginia. We'll see how the referees are going to call this one. That was wild. That's a touchback. It should be West Virginia's ball. The offense fumbled on the two-yard line through the end zone. The defense of West Virginia is entitled to the ball at the spot of the fumble. First down. Not a touchback then. And he's going to come over and explain it to Don Nealon. This is a great play by Pritchett. Zeely appears to be on his way into the end zone. But Aaron Beasley comes and pops the ball loose. What a great play by Beasley. The right hand rip, but now JT Thomas can't get it. Frederick can't get it. Canute Curtis reached down to pick it up and was popped out of his hands by Boomer Foster. Now West Virginia takes over on the three. I don't get it. Well, last night we saw Miami kick a ball out of the end zone, and it wound up first and goal at the four. That was nearly a touchback. That was the most amazing play all day. How could Justin keep big Stacy Evans from sacking him for a safety? What an effort. Final 54 seconds. Goofy ending, huh? Been a goofy game. Here's Johnson. Right side, incomplete. 43 seconds to go. And we got a flag in the end zone. It might be rough in the passer. As Johnson was leveled. Robin Moore threw the flag. Yep, he did. You know, he came out of that counting players. I it think, appeared yes. that he was, thought that maybe West Virginia had 12 men on the field. Come on, John! Come on, baby. We've had this clarified from our liaison official on the sideline that a forward fumble is spotted from the point of the fumble. Thus, no touchback. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And this just, this young man's just taking a real walloping now. This is where you really mature in a hurry as a quarterback is your ability to stand deep in your own end zone and 99 yards to go for a winning touchdown and you got to throw the ball 
and you then you get knocked out of the entire playing field. Been an impressive afternoon for both quarterbacks and for both teams. Fourth down and 12. Got it to Barber. But it's not enough, and the ball goes back to South Carolina. And they can start lining up at the airport in Columbia because the Garnet and Black are coming home with their first ball win. Chad Johnston, meanwhile, valiant in the end zone. He's a pharmacy major. <laughs> he may need some of his own product that he's going to dispense. A little painkiller. Aspirin. South Carolina about to go 7-5 for the year and about to celebrate with figure the school's first bowl victory ever. This ought to be that old trick play where the quarterback kneels down. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see <laughs> there you go. Fumble Ruski 3. <laughs> the sequel. Steve Tannehill for the afternoon. 26 of 36 for 227 yards. And he ran in for a touchdown, one of the more impressive plays of the day. Congratulations to Brad Scott and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Right now, let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. All right, Coach, 108 years, the streak is over. What's going through your mind right now? Well, I'll tell you, I'm so proud for our players and our fans. These Gamecocks, have, they've waited long enough for this. Our players did a great job. They refused to lose. West Virginia made it close. They looked like they were going to refuse to lose, too. What was in your head when, this, when that fumble happened? Well, I, I thought it can't be any harder than this. You know, all the bad things go through your mind. I was really wondering, you know, while we ran that play that was my call and maybe we had enough time just to kill the ball there all right coach congratulations Vern. thank you all right michelle and the car quest auto parts player of the game quarterback steve Tannehill. 227 yards on 26 of 36 that's a car quest ball record he also had one run of 26 yards and a touchdown a gutsy performance of four yards <laughs> 